So we've got to integrate. Hi, so who are you? I'm Johnny Austin. I'm the CTO of the Microbit Foundation. And this is one of our demos of, of the microbits radio communication. So we've got each one of these microbits here has got a, a, a number in the grid and it's using radio signals to broadcast whether it's on or off. And at the moment it's completely silent. But if I take one of these microbits and give it a shake, then I'm going to turn it on. And you'll hear now every time that we get to that microbit, it's going to play that note in our song. So I can actually also just change these with the buttons. So if we start to play a little scale at the beginning of our song, we've got five notes going up and eight beats in the bar going across. And as I turn the microbits on or off, we, we change whether they play or not. And we can play chords as well. So if I turn this one on, one up here. So we can build up our song. And this is all programmed in, our, in the new microbit editor, which is at, at pxt.microbit.org. So you have right here microbit, cool. uh, which Thanks is the famous microbit. So what's going yeah. on with microbit? So the microbit is designed for helping kids uh, learn to code. It's actually helping kids solve problems with technology. So we, we kind of wanted to make it first about solving problems and second about the, the technology. So how many kids have got it right now? We've got uh, just under a million rolled out in the UK. One million UK one, kids. One million UK kids. If they're only, age, age only 12 in the UK, they were given a microbit by the BBC as part of a, a big deployment in, in UK schools. So we've got a million of these being used. We've had How much does it cost for one? If you want to buy them commercially in the UK, they're, I think they're £13 just for a one-off microbit, £15 for one in a box with a USB That's cable and a battery pack. Price. That's the retail what's price. The, what's the factory, factory price, the, the manufacturer price? Oh, I, Is it a secret? Oh yeah, I can talk to you about the re retail the price. Yeah. We know, right? yeah. Okay, well, I mean, so we know. Thirteen pounds is okay. That's great. And what what is the what is the hardware here? So it, the hardware, if we look at the, the back of the board, we can see we've got a Nordic NRF five one eight two two, which is the the target MCU where all the children's code runs, and uh, a Freescale KL twenty six Z. So this is based on the Embed HDK, so the Embed Hardware Development Kit. It's an Embed Reference Platform. This here, the Freescale, or the, or the NXP, is a, is a reference, uh, it's a, an interface chip, sorry, and that's what gives us the USB drag and drop programming interface. And the radio, the NRF51822, is the target MCU, and that's where everyone's code runs. Cortex M0? Cortex M0. Yeah. Alright, how's the uh, performance? So, uh, what are people doing with it? Uh, like, you, you said it's a million kids? Uh, did it have a million different projects? Yeah, so actually we've had 10 million runs of projects on the simulator. So we've got a simulator for the microbit, which lets you test your project online. We've had, since the project launched, there have been 10 million runs on the simulator. Let's switch to a slightly simpler program so we can see what's going on. 10 million runs on the simulator and 2 million downloads to the microbit itself. So that's in uh, since since the rollout in April. We've had two million compilers How does to the it device. Work, this, uh, this website, you go <coughs> pxt.microbit.org, yeah. and if you have connected it, it just works. How does it work? So, my microbit here is. Oh, I just need some water. Sorry. Yeah. So it looks nice design. The website. Yes. So this was done by Microsoft, who are a, a key partner of the the microbit project, and they've built this. This is their new editor, pxt. Really straightforward. Simulator for kids to use. Is it the um, what's it called? The system that uh, uh, kids programming yeah, stuff. It's based on Google Blockly, which is a drag and drop programming interface. And the fantastic thing about this is it's entirely web-based. I don't need to install any software. I don't need to do anything. I can go to the website and it loads up and lets me program. Once I've loaded it once, I can use it offline as well. So if I have no internet connection, I can still program the microbit yeah, exactly. when I'm offline. And the way this works is it. it you, you write your program in drag and drop uh, interface, and then when you hit download, it gives you a file that you copy onto your microbit. So if I'm going to save this file here, my microbit here is enumerated as a mass storage device. So if I go to this download here, I just drag and drop the new hex file, the file onto the microbit. The button, the LED on the back flashes, tells me that it's programming. Right. So I didn't have to install any drivers on this computer, I didn't have to install any software, it just looks like a USB flash drive, and now our program is running here. So it's, it's a counter. counter. It's a counter, and if I push the button, I'm going to say hello. Is it count to a million? Uh, actually, it hasn't been running long enough for us to know how, how large it gets. Um, and if I shake it, we get a smiley face, because the microbit's got a built-in accelerometer, which lets us do really nice things with, um, with kind of motion and detecting what people are throwing it or dropping it, things like that. All right. So this is pretty awesome, right? Completely awesome. We, we, I mean, 
as far as we're concerned, it's one of the nicest ways to get started. You know, have your first touch with programming, with technology. And, and we, really, we really see this kind of opening up programming and education to a much wider audience than it's been there before. It was a collaboration of 31 partners um, led by the BBC. So 31 partners, too many to mention, but they're, they're, all, they're all on the website. Key partners, Microsoft have done the programming environment. Lancaster University have done uh, a lot of the low-level software. ARM, of course, it's based on ARM Embed. They've, they've contributed a huge amount of their te technology stack. Samsung did a mobile phone app. NXP involved for the silicon, Nordic involved for the silicon. Uh, I, I think I've already said the BBC coordinated this the whole thing. This is anniversary. Yeah, it was to, to celebrate the. I'm just, I'm just trying to think of the. Uh, you know, there are a lot of there are a lot of other key partners. Barclays as well on the website. How about our Welcome team? Trust. So wait, wait, let's go right we have the CEO right there. Right. Yeah, we've just we've just launched the Microbit Foundation. So that's that's aiming to take the Microbit and roll it out over the rest of the world. Uh, and, and so we're looking to partner with people in different countries. They'll become country partners, uh, and, and they'll be helping to deploy Microbit in schools in those countries. Cool, so you launched the Microbit Foundation uh, to make it happen everywhere. Exactly, to, yeah. To improve the, the curriculum integration of this stuff? Yeah, you so you want to make courses? We, we're looking. We're looking both at, at yeah, making really good teaching materials. With, you know, a roadmap for the improvement of the editors, a future device itself, and really strengthening and, and enriching all of our curriculum materials and the things that teachers can do with it. So you're gonna um, help uh, educate a millions of hackers of the future, right? Hopefully, that's the yeah. idea. Uh, is it cool to go into schools and see the kids play with us? Yeah, that, that's actually one of the best bits of my job. It, it, I don't get to do it very often, but I think on, on the Microbit launch day, uh, we went into a, a local school. It was, it was actually a local school that had been involved in the original BBC Micro, you know, all those years ago. I, I found in, in my bedroom at home, when I, uh, after I'd been working on the Microbit for about six months, I went back to my old family home and sorting out stuff in my bedroom, I found a welcome guide for the original BBC Micro, which is one of the ways I started learning to program. The very back page, it says, thanks to the help of the staff and students of Netherhall School for building this guide. And so we thought, well, why don't we go back to Netherhall School when we launched it? So we went into Netherhall and we, we did some programming classes with them. And we had kids excitedly, you know, using the device. And one of them turned around and said, miss, do I get to keep this? And, and that's, you know, the micro bit in that rollup was given to the kids and they do get to keep them. So seeing their enthusiasm for it, seeing them wanting to, you know, program. This was a girl who had never really done much programming before built herself a little a game and wanted to keep playing it. It's quite yeah, a bit cheaper than the original uh, BBC Micro, right? Right. Much cheaper, much, much smaller. Cheaper, like I, I don't have those numbers, sorry. 500 times cheaper? No, yeah. not that much. Yeah, the actually, the when, when, the BBC, when the BBC launched the Micro bit, they like did some stats pounds? on the prices and the scale, how much it weighs, how much power it's got, all those different things. So, um, I'm guessing maybe you, you see some... Yeah, Apps that the kids are doing already? Yeah, we I mean we see we see things you know up from the really simple. One of the, one of my favorite things that I saw was a girl that, again at Netherhall School, 20 minutes into using the microbit, had built herself a little example of a of a dog. So it was a picture of a dog that was sitting down. If you tilted it backwards, the dog was sitting. If you tilted it forwards, the dog was standing up, and if you tilted it all the way forwards, then the dog did a little running animation. And it wasn't, you know, it's not a complex, complex thing, but what was interesting was that within 20 minutes of picking up the device, she'd started to do something interactive and something that, that you know, really she cared about and, 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 you know, responded to motion. And kids who enjoy this should just be able to upgrade Absolutely. and get to the so, Cortex um, a73 development board with a octa core and right. Mali graphics. So if you look, what our demo here has got a microbit talking to a Raspberry Pi. So yeah. we've got a component on the microbit and we've got a component running on the Pi. Pi. So you know we we really see we see microbit as as maybe a very first step, but we all you know actually we've got two different Pis on this desk, both of them talking to microbits. This one over here, the microbit is being used to scroll the. Uh, oh. I need to re yeah. reboot the Pi, but the microbit is scrolling the IP address of the yeah. Raspberry Pi just so you can know how to connect to it. The other thing that we do here is, this is the kind of drag and drop programming in interface, but in Microsoft's new PXT, which, which yeah. we're using here, if I click JavaScript. Is it Scratch uh, inspired? It, it, it's Scratch inspired, yeah. yeah. If I click JavaScript, then you can see the JavaScript code that our blocks were generated from. So this is really great for progression. If you want to start with something, you know, drag and drop, but then you want to see what did I just build? What does that look like in JavaScript? You can you can do that conversion. So you have twelve year olds checking all the code. 
Right, and, that's uh, good. Is it like perfect or could it be even more simple? Uh, what do you think? I mean, th there's all, there are always things that I'd like to improve. I think we've struck a really nice balance of getting started quickly, but still being able to achieve quite impressive things. How about other years? Is why only 12 year olds? How about getting 11 and 13 year olds? Could it happen? Uh, that, like uh, has been uh, uh, calculated that it's best with 12 year olds, right? But all the kids want to play with this, right? Yeah. So we see. Well, we see. We see. We actually see both older and younger kids. I think there's a lot of potential in the broader ecosystem. You know, going right down to primary, and and you know, I have a I have a friend who's building a commercial. LED. So this is this is um, talking to a, an unmodified off-the-shelf Bluetooth bowl. Yeah. So here's a micro bit. We got a 3D printed little presentation remote case, but this is programmed in in our members, and it's using Bluetooth Low Energy, and it, it's talking to this completely unmodified bulb. So this is this is relevant not just to kids, but this is anyone who wants to build a product that talks Bluetooth Low Energy could take something like this and nice. and build it with embeds really fast. Nice. Cool. And uh, who are you? Zach Shelby. So. Um, are you the CEO? I'm the CEO of the Microbit Foundation, yes. So what's the plan right now? Well, the Microbit's gone all over in the UK. We have almost a million devices that have gone to every seventh grader in the UK. And people are super excited. Um, and in fact, they're excited all around the world. So our job right now is to make Microbit available to everyone who wants to use it. So why do you create a foundation? And so, to be separated from yeah, so Ar Arm was one of the partners that helped create the Microbit, together with the BBC, Microsoft, the IET, many, many organizations. And so we felt that a foundation is the right way to keep the educational focus of Microbit there. And that is really um, helping to enable any child to be an inventor. We really care about that invention, that creativity, when they first touch technology for the first time. So. So there's uh, uh, there's been a lot of development boards of the recent past, right? Mm. And have you learned from that from the way you did Microbit to yep. make it even easier, better, or something? Yeah, um, the real key thing here is that the BBC, when they created Microbit in the UK, they really focused on UX, so usability for young people. And what they kept in mind is that they want this experience for even eight, nine, ten-year-old kids to just pick this up and start creating something, right? Without being technical, without having to know about programming or coding. So this is really about creativity with technology. It's not about coding. And that's what makes us very, very different than, let's say, uh, a Raspberry Pi, which is a computer, and that's great as the next step. Or an Arduino, which is electronics, and that's great as the next step, too. But we see Microbit as the first stage in their learning experience with technology. What would be great is uh, connect all these kids to startups, mm, yeah. and maybe a 13-year-old, <laughs> they'll actually launch a new company yeah. that has a robot that cleans, uh, cleans houses or something. Yeah, we'd love to see another generation of entrepreneurs from this. I'm an entrepreneur myself, so I'm, I'm very much in favor of encouraging kids to get, create things and create things and even sell them, right? Create things that are useful for other people, solve problems. Um, we're already see, starting to see some pretty young kids, 16, 17, create accessory products uh, based on the microbit. So they become entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. UK really needs that. Everybody needs that. Yeah, I mean, the interesting thing about technology is that what you do with technology is never the same in any one place in the world. What a young person in China needs to do to solve their problems with technology is very different than in the US or let's say in Africa, right? The technology problems in Africa are totally different, but we can still use it in, in a positive way. So BBC Micro original mm. didn't go very far. I mean, it, there were some people in Europe, right? But it didn't go much out of UK, right? So now you're going you're gonna to try to potentially 2017, the whole world is going to have micro bits? Absolutely. So yes, the original BBC Micro was mainly in the UK. It did go around Europe somewhat. Um, micro bit has already gone really broadly. So we've got deployments going on in Iceland and the Netherlands already. Uh, we just announced Norway. So we have Norwegian language support on our website. We have pilots going on in the US, in China, in Singapore, in Bangladesh. So all around the world, people are already using Microbit. Can you use it with a Chromebook or it has to be on a Windows computer? You can use it with a Chromebook, yep. I've actually tested it on my daughter, my 10-year-old daughter's Chromebook. I stole it. And I tested it and it does work, yeah. 
I don't remember. I don't remember. I don't remember, but it just worked. It worked. Yep. All right. So, what's next? What's the collaboration you have? You have some. Very hard work. Yeah. So yeah, we're working very hard to to make the experience even better. So for example, we just recently brought this new version of our editor yeah. um, live for everyone, so that they can do peer to peer radio, and that lets us do things like this. This wouldn't be possible without peer -to -peer. the peer to peer radio. Yeah, these all these all talk to this micro bit. So you can have a, a limited amount of Bluetooth peer to peer. In theory, at some time, some point, you're gonna you're gonna um, you're gonna uh, flood your channel. But yeah, a you reasonable can number extra of them. Sensors? Yes. So and it works in those halls, or yeah. So you can actually, um, with alligator clips, you can connect sensors. Those are uh, digital analog input output, or you can get an edge connector like this. And this edge connector lets you lets you access all the pins that are on the connector on both sides. How much is a board like this? Alligator. Let's go right here again. Okay. Cool. Yeah.